That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Freaky! Uh, the, late, the latest film directed by Christopher Landon, uh, which is re will be released November 13th, 2020, courtesy of Universal. It was also notably produced uh, through Blumhouse. Alright. This was a fun film. Yeah. Familiar, mm. very, but fun, yeah. Okay, the basic story. A psychopathic serial killer, mm -hmm. played by Vince Vaughn. The Blissfield Butcher. The Blissfield Butcher. Mm -hmm. The film opens with him on a killing rampage inside of like this fancy house where he's... A palatial estate. ...taken down several like young people. Mm -hmm. And before he leaves, he steals a dagger that's in this very like ornate glass case. Because the uh, rich white people that own the home collect various artifacts. And he, the, what they steal is a magical dagger called the Dola. The Dola. Mm -hmm. So, cut to him, uh, we, we're introduced to a girl named Millie, who's mm -hmm. played by... Catherine Newton of Big Little Lies and Blockers. So, she's kind of bullied at school. She's, they've, they've gone through some family trauma because her father is dead, and she lives with her, um... Mother, mother who's, who's like a drunk. Who likes Chard, a lot of Chardonnay, and, um... Her sister who's a police officer. Yes, that lives with them. What's the brand? Is it Swan Song? Is that the Chardonnay she's drinking? Oh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> so, like, her life's not the best, but she's lucky to have two great friends, a gay boy played by... Uh, Misha Osherovich. Who I really liked. And her black girlfriend... Nyla, played by Celeste O'Connor. Who's also lovely. Who's uh, described uh, in the press notes as super woke, uh, which kind of reminded me of similarly how the black girl is used in the Black Christmas remake. Oh, okay. So, Vince Vaughn's character is now um, on, like, the school grounds, and Millie is, like, the school mascot. Mm -hmm. So she's there late one night, wanting not to go home, because her mom's, like, probably drunk. No, she's her mother doesn't pick her up. Oh, that's right. She's there because her mom doesn't pick her up. So Vince Vaughn's character um, is attacking her using that dagger, the magical dagger, and the stars aligned, the sun, the moon, I don't know what was happening, but when he strikes her, he also like injures himself in the same spot he, he stabs her, and then like the magic happens. Well, the magic doesn't happen, the, not, the transformation doesn't happen because he's interrupted from killing her by her sister who shows up and shoots and he runs away. And then at midnight is when the film shows us that the switch happens. So basically it's like Freaky Friday. Mm -hmm. And among many other things. Among many. So they switch bodies. Mm -hmm. So the bulk of the film is just sort of like, I mean, it's calamitous. There are a lot of kills. There are a lot of very gory, impressive kills. But it's predictable. Like, obviously, they need to switch bodies back. They well, have 24 hours to do it, and they learn that because um, the gay boy looks up, like, this Dola dagger, and the information he finds is all in Spanish. And even though he's taken several years of Spanish, he doesn't know what it says. So they go to the Spanish instructor mm -hmm. and she translates it and she knows all about the dagger and explains to them what they um, need to do, which is like in order to reverse the spell, it has to be done within 24 hours. And they basically have to like duplicate that same action. Mm -hmm. They're successful. So uh, the two switch back. And you would think that'd be the end of the movie, but it's not because then Vince Vaughn's character, who's not dead, because there's a scene where he's, because he's been shot and he's riding back in an ambulance and we see that he's faked his own death by like removing the thing that monitors his vitals. So I'm assuming he kills the paramedics, whomever was in the ambulance. He makes his way back to Millie's house with the intention of killing her and her family, mm -hmm. but they kill him. But then the three women, not unlike the Halloween uh, reboot by David Gordon Green, is this family of women coming together to conquer the male killer. Yep, the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed it. It's just, I, I wish it would do a little bit more. Um, you know, because this, the the body switching scenario, that is, a, it's a great way to play with gender and sexual norms, which it kind of lightly it touches on. I, I think it's funny that, what, two weeks ago, we just happened to rewatch The Hot Chick, which, oh, sure. which this film feels very much like where they're in the mall and they stumble upon the earrings that are artifacts, artifacts from an ancient Egyptian uh, 
tragedy that happened and and then we get you, in that film you have Rob Schneider kind of doing a lot like what Vince Vaughn is doing here yeah um, so like you said it is predictable like the bully girls like the girls who are bullying bullying Millie in the beginning obviously it's like well I hope these bitches die and Ry they do Ryler and that, they do that death is so unbelievable because she puts her in the athletic departments um, oh so I have all these written down like I think there are some pretty cool kills. Starting so, in the beginning where the... So starting in the beginning with the wine bottle down the throat. Yeah. And then it like shatter or breaks through his like throat actually. Mm -hmm. Down the mouth, breaks through the neck. The, I thought that was pretty gruesome. Um, someone gets their head smashed in with a toilet seat. The girl. That was very gruesome. Mm -hmm. The cryo tank in the gym. That... It was a cool scene, but that made no sense. Well, that, But uh, neither does switching bodies at midnight, so I don't know. <laughs> that's true, but it's just like the, this high school facility would not leave something like that unguarded where that could happen. It where did, it could happen and that it could get that cold. Right. Uh, it did remind me of the scene in Halloween 2 where Michael Myers kills those um, hospital attendees in the, the hot tub in the hospital and they their bodies melt. Sure. Yeah. Or that makes me think of that scene in Ratchet. Where they put the lesbian in the oh yes mm -hmm. that hot sure. ass tub. Um, there's a character who gets split in half like on a table saw. There's another oh, one. Oh, isn't that Alan Ruck, the shop teacher? Yeah, and yep. then there's uh, one of them gets like a hook in the eye and like dragged into a wall. There are some really cool kills. Um, yeah, the guy from Ferris Bueller is in it. Mm -hmm. He plays like a shop teacher. Who's just a dick. Who is trash? Mm -hmm. He the wood shop teacher is trash. <laughs> He's so mean. Oh, I like which the, kind of took me out because that behavior is just not possible. Right, right. So that mm. the scene where Ryler gets before she gets killed and she brings um, Millie into the locker room, and she's like, "I'm not here to clam jam with you." Yeah, that was. I liked the Millie, the actor, Catherine Newton. Yeah, I liked her. I liked her too. Um, she, uh, again, though, kind of like what we were just talking about with the craft legacy where this new girl is, or the, this, this protagonist is supposed to be this pariah. And it's like she's this beautiful girl. She's this beautiful girl with fresh highlights. I don't know like how she's not popular. So that seemed a little... Mm -hmm. uh, when Vince, when we see where Vince Vaughn's character lives, it's like you're... If you ask like a nine-year-old to draw like a serial killer's lair... Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just like body parts and like skeletons and crazy shit everywhere, super dirty. That, it was amusing, but also like it, like it's so predictable. It's so predictable. Everything about the film. Even, it, it was a sweet scene, of course, when the Booker, who's the object of affection for Millie, uh, realizes that she's in Vince Vaughn's body. Oh, body I wrote that down this. because let me say, so, as I'm watching it, I'm like, if this Jonas looking boy kisses yeah, like, Vince Vaughn, and, and he does. He does. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. One thing that really was distracting to me was they don't really mention like genitals, especially Vince Vaughn's character in the, the serial killer in Millie's body because he's a psychopath. He's insane. He's a, like, if he woke up in like a beautiful young girl's body, I just feel like he would definitely, there'd be a lot of innuendo about what he'd do to the body, mm -hmm. and there's zero. And then Millie, when she's in Vince Vaughn's body, there's a scene where she's peeing and she kind of talks about, like, how it's weird. But I would assume, like, the very first time she notices her body's different, she would say something. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't. And yeah, I felt like this is not a PG-13 movie. It's like, not. Uh, and again, something like the hot chick actually pressed on that a little bit more, like Rachel McAdams getting her period and Rob Schneider inside her not knowing what to do and him learning how to pee for the... Yeah, it, it's, it's, those are requisite things that should this experience ever happen to you, you would, <laughs> you, you know, it would be a big part of it. My last note was uh, the way Vince Vaughn's character is taken down uh, in what we think is the end is the cops are so quick to shoot him, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of, I mean, you know, it's apropos for what's going on right now. <laughs> like because literally the, the doesn't the gay boys say like shoot that guy or mm -hmm. and they just shoot his ass uh -huh. he's not like armed he's not threatening yeah them. yeah they sure do they just they, shoot his ass um, anyway I, you know that if you like if you find these kind of scenarios fun the body switch the freaky friday either version the change up remember that one with ryan reynolds and jason bateman uh -huh. like this has been done to death um 
But in honor of this, it reminded me I'd never seen Switch, which I went back and watched after this with Ellen Barkin and Jimmy Smits from 1991, directed by Blake Edwards. And that film has a lot of queerness in the subtext that is more progressive than this. Like, I had to laugh watching Switch. Like, there were so many times, I'm like, this is so far ahead of its time and what it's doing with this scenario, which is not quite the same as this. But to, to the point where we think this, like, kiss with Vince Vaughn and this young boy is so progressive. Like, well, not really. No, it's not. But I think for, like, a slasher-type movie, it's okay. And, and also Landon, um, who's the son of Michael Landon, uh, he directed Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You, uh, which also are, are refurbished um, vintage uh, narrative ploys. Mm-hmm. J- just just dressed up in this kind of slasher flick that he seems to like, but... But I think, you know, he has a nice eye for... Like, there's style to it. I'll sure. to it. What would you give this film? I would give it three out of five. Oh, I would give it two and a half out of five. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bye.